Now, you have a lot of knowledge on bacteria as well. So bacteria, there's a, a consortium of bacteria in Stash Blend. There's a Bacillus lichenformis, Bacillus pecherelli, Bacillus subtilis, and then a Pam Bacillus azofixens, which I probably butchered all of those names, ah, but, that's, that's but uh, you know, I came close, right? Yeah, you came, you came really close. Break it down for us all about bacteria, You know what those particular species do for plant health. Yeah, I think when you look at that mix, right, and simple Google searches will tell you, you know, specifically what each one of those do. And I think in fairness of time, without going too far down a rabbit hole, I don't think I'll address, you know, each one of them in its in its particular. But you have that genus and species that identifies what what you have, right? But it's not quite that simple because then you have different strains of those genus and species, right? And so each different strain of a bacillus a uh, subtilis example uh, is going to work a little bit differently from one strain to the next. And so what we've identified over the course of time and, and through a fermentative process is a strain of select individuals that will do primarily two things is what we're trying to accomplish. One is just overall plant health, right? And guarding that rhizosphere and, uh, and giving those molecular signals to the plant and out competing the pathogenic bacteria that might be in the soil. And then the other is nutrient uptake. And usually what we're looking at there is just kind of overall from an enzymatic perspective, but also uh, in, in particular from a nitrogen uptake perspective as well. And, you know, if you look at the stash plan, I know we've talked about, you know, individual ingredients, right? And, and kind of on their own. I think every one of the ingredients on their own has real merit, right? I think it's going to absolutely help you in your grow. But I think in the format that we have them, the specific species that we built out in our biology, the amino acid polymer, the humics of seaweeds, the food source in a form of corn steep liquor, that synergy of ingredients that we've tied in, you know, across multiple continents of raw materials and brought into one bag, you know, I think that's, that's where that special performance really comes into when you use those things in synergies. Um, and so the biology is, you know, obviously, a big part of that, that it is lyophilized, it's freeze-dried onto a sugar-based substrate. And uh, when it gets into water, it, uh, the signal to the biology is, hey, we've got water again, uh, let's rock and roll. And, and the reason we use a sugar-based substrate is so that the, the, there's a humectancy with those sugars, right? So the cells don't dry out when you're going through that lyophilization process. And lyophilization is freeze-drying, by the way. So you can spray dry with heat or you can freeze-dry uh, using cold temperatures, and uh, at that point in time, it's more kind of a, uh, an evaporation sublimation if you go from a freezing to a gas. Um, but it, it's a lot more gentle when it comes to the survival of the species and using those humectants, um, those osmolites are, are how, we, how we preserve the, uh, the bacteria. I think the species that intrigues me the most is the Pam Bacillus azos fictions because it's nitrogen fixing bacteria. It's just, it blows my mind that they're able to grab nitrogen from the air yes. and convert it into a form that the plant can uptake. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, it is really neat. And there's more of that coming, right? I mean, I think even in row crop, uh, if you look at some of the companies that are out there, some of the startup companies, um, there's gaining traction where they're, they're putting these specific species and strains of biology down to help uh, bring in nitrogen, and they're, they they know predictably that you can reduce your your synthetic nitrogen inputs by X number of pounds per acre when they do that, and that's that's neat. And we need we need more of that, by the way, because there's a, an incredible amount of emissions uh, that are that are offput during that manufacturing of, of fertilizer, as you know. And and the industry is not resting on its laurels. I think people are actively trying to figure out. A, a Haber Bosch process where you can fix nitrogen from the air, you know, using sustainable uh, electricity and 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 with reduced pressures and reduced heat, and uh, they, we're not there yet, obviously. But you know, that's that's a process that's you know 100 years old, and uh, it, it it needs some updating. But attacking it from the biological side, you know, to me, yeah, yes, please. Let, let's see more of that. Yeah, if it can be sustainable. Uh, and not cause harm to the environment, that would be fantastic. Yeah. This clip is brought to you by Stash Blend. Use coupon code THESTASH for a discount on your order. 